Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at earthing, and specifically TT earthing, and even more specifically, the situation where you might want to use a TT earth, so just putting an electrode in the ground, where you've already got a TN earth supplied to the property, so that'll be a TNS or a TNCS. Now this can cover various situations, but certainly common ones would be electric vehicle charging, where you don't want to use that TNS or TNCS earth for the electrical charging point, and also things like hot tubs, which again are outside, and say things like swimming pools and various other things. Also, we'll cover things like outbuildings as well, particularly where they have extraneous conductive parts in them, such as say, things like water pipes and whatever else. Now, you might be tempted to think that uh, just by uh, not using the uh, earth that comes from the supplier, shoving an electrode in the ground and using that instead, then all is well. But unfortunately, it's uh, considerably more complex than that, and there's the various things which you definitely need to look out for, because if you don't, then what you're going to end up with is not a TT system at all, but something entirely different. So let's have a quick look first at the uh, types of earthing, just a quick overview, and then we'll see some of the problems that uh, can and do arise. Now a quick reminder of what the uh, earthing systems are. So we've got a TN system, and this is where you've got a metal conductor back to the transformer. This can either be the single conductor, just an earth conductor going back there along with the line and neutral, or it can be a combined one where you've only got the line and then a combined neutral and earth conductor. That's generally as a TNCS or in some cases TNS, so a separate earth conductor, or in this case combined, so that's your uh, neutral and earth in the same conductor there, and then separate within the installation. And we have done a video on this before, so uh, that's uh, covered in that one in more detail. Now certainly in the UK most supplies are going to be TNCS, even the ones that look like TNS where you've got a separate one coming in could well be the equivalent of TNCS back in the network. The real difference here is whether it's a separate neutral and earth cable or in the case of this one a combined neutral and earth cable now traditionally most of the UK was TNS with a separate earthing conductor, and that was typically lead covered cable with two conductors inside, and then uh, TNCS for the more modern areas, basically anything in the last 40 years or so. Unfortunately, even the things that look like TNS now could well be using C&E cabling back in the network, because if parts of it were repaired or altered or moved about or whatever else, who's to say that uh, that type of cable was used, it could well have been this. And if you've got a connection between the neutral and earth conductors pretty much anywhere other than at the transformer, it's not really TNS anymore. So uh, certainly for things like electric vehicle charging and other outside stuff, it's generally the case that it's going to be assumed to be a TNCS or a combined neutral and earth system, unless you can get confirmation in writing or whatever that it is in fact separate all the way back to the transformer. That's not going to be very likely in most situations. Now the danger with using this for things that are outside, like electric vehicles, hot tubs and whatever, is that if this combined neutral and earth cable becomes damaged and this is broken, because these two are linked together, you then don't have an earth connection or a neutral connection, and that result of that is that all of the metal parts in the installation that are connected will become live at some voltage approaching the normal mains voltage, 230 volts or so, and if you're connected to a three-phase system, that voltage can go somewhat higher than that, depending on the loads and things installed. And that's why this is not generally desirable for use outside. And we have covered that in another video as well. So the answer to avoid that uh, obvious danger, certainly with things like hot tubs, swimming pools, will be to use a TT system, which is just basically where you have your electrode in the ground and nothing else connected to it. So the only path back to the supply where the base of the transformer is is through the mass of earth itself. There's no metallic path or connection back to that, and that avoids the problem of, say, the combined neutral and earth cables being broken or whatever. So therefore it's quite a safer option, particularly for things which are outside. Now for stuff inside a building, it doesn't generally make a huge difference, because inside a building you're not going to be standing on the actual earth itself, you're going to be on some kind of flooring, insulated, wooden floors, carpet, who knows what else. And of course even with exposed metal parts and extraneous metal parts in the installation, they're all going to be bonded together. And the purpose of that is to keep them at the same voltage, so that even if some kind of dangerous voltage does appear, everything is then at the same voltage within the property. So of course you're not going to get a shock from that if it's all at the same voltage or the same potential. The problem when you take this outside is you can't very effectively bond to the mass of earth itself, 
So what you generally expect then is that if this fault occurred, metal items outside which were connected to this uh, earth connection of the supplier would be at a considerably different voltage to the earth itself. In the case of a car, that's going to be the actual car body. And of course you're going to open the door handle and touch it and you're standing on the ground there. Substantial voltage between the two. And the same applies to things like hot tubs and obviously swimming pools or whatever else. Metal parts are going to be at a dangerous voltage. The earth itself you're standing on is not. Now if you've got a TNCS or TNS supply, you don't have to use that connection. You can just use a TT system instead. Not a particular problem with the, the concept of this. But the key point here is that when you put your earth electrode in, it doesn't connect to anything else at all. It is literally just the electrode you've got and not connected to anything else. So that may seem very obvious, but unfortunately there's a whole pile of situations where not connecting to anything else actually becomes extremely difficult or even impossible. Now let's have a look at a typical example of this. So let's say you've got a house or some building or other, and this building has a TNCS supply, as is commonly the case. That's by far the most common option in the UK. What's going to come in from there from the supplier is going to be two conductors. You're going to have your line conductor coming in, and then the other one is going to be a combined neutral and earth conductor. And then within the property, that's going to be split out. So you've got your three connections there. So line, neutral, and the earth over there. And this really is the problem with this link between the two, and that's what you want to avoid going to an outbuilding. So here's our outbuilding. Now a lot of people seem to think that, oh, you've got an outbuilding, you can't possibly use the earth from the TNCS supply in it. Well, you can, and we've already covered this in another video. The only restriction being that if you are going to use that, then if there are extraneous conductive parts in here, such as a water pipe or something similar, let's put that in there as the water, then this water pipe would need to be bonded to the earth connection, just the same as one would be in the main property. So if you wanted to use that connection, all you need to do is extend these three conductors across to the remote property. And you would also need to provide a bonding conductor, which is going to have to be the minimum of 10 millimeter squared. And therefore you need a basically a 10 millimeter size cable for all three. Typically that would be an armoured cable. But provided that you're going to bond these in the outbuilding as well as in the main supply, there's not actually a problem there. Bear in mind this is inside, so it's going to be a shed or whatever else building. There's no real difference between a shed completely inside and your normal house that's completely inside. So if you wanted to do that, all that would happen is that the three conductors would come across. So there would be the line conductor. Neutral would come across as well. And of course the earth conductor. This would all be within a single cable, typically an armoured cable. And then this end you would need to install a bonding connection to that water pipe or whatever other metallic part was coming in. And again, this would need to be the minimum size of around 10 millimeters squared for a typical TNCS supply. So not a problem with that. Perfectly acceptable to do it. Now, if I wanted to make this a TT, it's the same cable coming across of the appropriate size. In this case, it doesn't have to be 10 millimeters squared or more. That was only because of the bonding requirement. In this case, it would just be sized to whatever the load happened to be. Line and neutral conductors come in. It's still going to have the earth conductor throughout the cable, or the circuit protective conductor. If this is an armoured cable, that could just be the armouring, or it could be the armour plus an additional core in the side. Generally you just have a two core if it was going to be for this particular application. But crucially, when you get to this end of the building here, this connection here from the earth from the main building is not connected. So that would just end here in some kind of insulated container. And then all you would have inside the building there would be the neutral and line conductors. And then to provide the earth connection you would need to install your earth electrode, so that will be into the ground here in some fashion. And then this connection becomes your earth for this building. And note that there's no connection between the two, because obviously yeah, that's the whole point, it's now a separate earth system, and then this would be a TT installation. Now that's fine if you don't have any extraneous conductive parts such as water pipes or whatever else, but if you do, then this is where one of the problems can occur, because if this metal water pipe here goes into this building, then of course that would need to be bonded to your earth connection for that building. So that if the fault occurs, it keeps this at the same potential as the other parts within the building. So not a problem there, but you've got to really consider where this metal water pipe comes from. Let's put metal there so we can uh, 
Remember that. So where's this metal water pipe coming from? Does it in fact come from the house over here? Fairly likely, if it's an outbuilding, it's going to come from the same water supply. In the house over here, you're going to have a connection to the bonding there, from here to the incoming earth supply. And if this was metal all the way through, then what kind of connection we now got over here, unfortunately, it is not a TT connection anymore, because we've now got a metallic path via the water pipe back to the TNCS earth over here. So now all we've got is a TNCS system here, and it just happens to have an extra earth electrode shoved in for whatever reason. So you haven't actually avoided any of the dangers here. You've just simply stuck an electrode in the ground, probably for no reason, and then linked it to this. And now you've got a TNCS system in here, which you've now exported via the metal water pipes. And you've ended up with exactly the same situation, except you now don't have that 10 millimeter bonding connection from here. It's all uh, gone a bit wrong. So that's something to definitely uh, avoid. So uh, unless this water pipe happened to come from somewhere completely unrelated, then realistically this is not a valid option. Now here's another scenario. So here's our house, TNCS supply there, as we had before, with the linked neutral and earth. And you want to install something outside, which uh, you decided for some reason is not going to be appropriate for the TNC earth to be connected to. So this could be a charge point. Now the same kind of problem is going to apply here. If you uh, put this on the wall here of the uh, property, you can certainly bring over the uh, conductors to that. So again, the neutral would come over like that, and then the line, of course, uh, does likewise. The cable is going to have the earth connection in it, but crucially, that's going to uh, stop within the uh, fixture there. And then you might say put another earth electrode in here for the EV charge point, and this could also be a hot tub or something else like that. So these two conductors come into the unit and obviously whatever outlet you've got, but your earth connection then comes from your earth electrode, and then crucially there's no connection between those two inside, so this just comes in as part of the cable. These three then become your actual connection, and then this is purely the earth electrode in the ground, and then you might call this a TT system. But once again there's a problem here in that where is this electrode positioned relative to all kinds of other stuff in the ground? Now if this property has some water pipes or gas pipes or whatever pipes you've got, those of course are going to come into the property and they're going to be underground somewhere along in the street, for example. Now if a fault occurs within the property, such as that thing where the uh, incoming conductor is damaged, some current is going to flow via these metal pipes here, because of course they're bonded together at the uh, side of the property there. If this electrode that you've shoved in happens to be nearby some of these items, some of this current here will induce a voltage onto this particular electrode, and that will show up on the equipment that's plugged into this item here. Because if current is flowing down here, there must be a voltage somewhere here, and the voltage doesn't just magically disappear into the metal copper pipe or whatever. It will gradually fall away. So at this point, say, you may have, the, say, the full 230, if this was, say, a broken conductor here. As you move away from that, the voltage will fall, but it's not going to just drop off within a couple of inches or something. It will actually extend away and then gradually drop off the further away you get. So how far away does your electrode need to be from metallic parts and things buried in the ground? Well. Electricity network operators give various suggestions for this, and typically it's between 5 and 10 metres measured away from the conductive parts. Now, in many houses that's going to be impossible, because 5 to 10 metres could you put you in, say, in the next door's garden, or in the middle of the street or somewhere else where you can't actually get the electrode. And it's not just, say, metal pipes here. It also applies to other things like the incoming supply cable, and if you're in a row of houses, that cable is going to extend probably all the way along the road. So once again, this isn't really a TT system, because if a fault occurs, some of that fault there is going to induce a voltage on this. And again, you've got back to pretty much the same situations if you just connected through directly. Now here's the third situation. What if you wanted to make your entire house a TT arrangement? 
because then that would avoid the problems of having your pipes sort of coming in and out and uh, being bonded to the incoming earth terminal and so on. And of course that is a valid thing and in some cases uh, that has been recommended by certain manufacturers of equipment such as those uh, battery arrangements you can have stock on the wall of your house. And of course you uh, might decide that was a better option anyway than having the combined neutral and earth coming in. So uh, again it might seem just like sticking an electrode in the ground. Let's put that in here and using that as your earth connection. But even if you manage to get this say 10 meters away from any pipes and whatever's in the ground there's yet another thing to consider. If you've got a metal pipe coming into your house, and we're going to say it's a water pipe there, put water for W for water, where does this pipe actually go? Well the chances are that it goes along the street and goes into your neighbour's house and then it continues along the street and goes into another house further down over there and then probably continues on and goes to many many other houses as well. So if you're going to ignore the uh, incoming earth here, not bother to use that, you're just going to have your earth over here as your earth electrode. That will go into the house. Metal water pipe of course needs to be bonded to the earth connection so you would put that in. So it all seems well. Until of course you consider what's going on in your neighbour's house. They are going to have electricity coming in fairly obviously and it's going to be from the same uh, supply most likely. So you're going to have the uh, line coming in and they're going to have the uh, neutral coming in. And where does the earth in their house come from? Well surprisingly enough it's going to be one of these combined neutral and earth jobs. And because there's a metal pipe going in the house, well, yep, there's going to be a bonding connection between their water pipes and the TNCS earth. And the same will apply over here in the, the one down the street a bit further. And that would have the line, of course, uh, coming in as well. So again, if you thought that this was going to be a TT system, well, unfortunately, no, it isn't. This is again just connecting back to the same earth connection from the supplier because all your neighbours have got that connected in and the metal pipes are going to bring in that earth connection to that. So even if you didn't connect here, it's then indirectly connected via the other pipes there. So if you actually want to do this, what you have to do is to get rid of these metal pipes and replace them with plastic ones and that applies to the water and the gas. And of course if your water pipes were plastic then of course there is no bonding connection to those so you don't obviously uh, have that problem or just earth connection goes in to whatever you've got and then there is no connection to those pipes because of course being made of plastic. And that same applies again with the distance outside so your electrode has to be up to 10 metres away from any buried pipes, buried cables, buried only of metal parts that could be connected to that TNCS earth. You can't have any metallic services coming into your property unless you know for a fact that you are the only property that's connected to those and that's extremely unlikely unless you happen to live on a farm and your water comes from a big tank outside in the yard. But uh, if it's connected to any other properties of course that's going to bring in that other earth connection so you can't have any of that. So Making a whole house TT when it already isn't is actually surprisingly difficult because 10 metres away, remember, from any other particular properties, not really very realistic in a lot of situations. So if you want to make a TT system where you've already got T and Earth in existing, then uh, there's a few things to consider. Number one is the electrode needs to be far away from any other conductive items connected to the TN earth and typically that's around 10 meters distance. So that's things like water pipes, gas pipes, other earth connections, the supply cable itself and anything else that may happen to be shoved under the ground. Number two, extraneous conductive parts, ideally none of them because it's inevitable that those are going to go to other properties that are connected to that TN earth so you can't have any. It's not an option to just not connect to them because of course they exist and they need to be bonded so the only answer is basically to replace them with plastic versions. So that would be things like water, gas and so on. You can do gas in plastic because it's okay to have plastic underground up to the property you can still have metal pipes within the property because then they're not connected to your neighbours via the underground uh, steel pipes or whatever. 
And if you don't do these two items, then there's a very good chance that what you think is TT is in fact not TT at all. It's probably TNCS, and it just happens to have an extra electrode added to it. And the final point there is that if you do have your house and you want to add an earth electrode to your existing earthing system, then that is perfectly acceptable. So uh, we'll just draw that in there again. So there's the uh, neutral coming in. And of course the line. Earth is derived from the neutral there. And that would be your TNCS. So if you had this uh, particular house, you wanted to add in your own electrode, such as outside there, and then you wanted to connect it to the TNC Earth, Earth then uh, that's perfectly allowed. Not a problem with that. And if you think about it, this is no different to bonding to, say, the metal, gas and water pipes which have been in the ground for the last 50 years. So this is totally acceptable. The reason you might want to do this is that if this cable then did become broken, you still have an Earth connection. And the point of this is it will then reduce any dangerous voltages which would appear within the installation. The problem with doing this is that to have any kind of real effect here, this particular electrode needs to have a fairly low resistance. And for a modest load in the installation, you're talking... 10 ohms or less in most cases. Just shoving in a single electrode is not going to get anywhere near 10 ohms. But uh, if you can get one that's very low, such as foundation electrodes or whatever else, then that is certainly acceptable. And in fact, it's actually a very good idea. As I say, when you get this broken combined neutral and earth connection issue, that's providing the earth path there. Keeps those dangerous voltages down to a minimum. And in this particular case, because it's all connected to the same earthing connection here, there's no particular restriction on how far away this has to be. There's no 10 metre rule or anything like that, and uh, it can be uh, pretty much as close as you want to. Obviously, you don't want to be driving it through uh, gas pipes and whatever else, but uh, it doesn't have to be any particular distance because it's all part of the same earthing system. Very well, it's connected here anyway, so the fact that it might be a half a metre away from an underground pipe, well, so what? It's not going to change anything. So if it's a TT system, we want all of those 10 metre rules and not having anything else connected to it do apply. But if it's just going to be an electrode connected to your existing earthing arrangement, then you can basically put it uh, wherever is convenient. But again, you do need that very low resistance there, typically under 10 ohms. And if there's a substantial load on the installation, such as with a car charge or whatever, then in some cases it can in fact be even less. So you'll be looking at sort of... Uh, 4 ohms or less, so it's really only practical with a very large foundation electrode or something like that. So that's TT systems, and more specifically converting it from an existing TN earth. Not as straightforward as just shoving an electrode in and connecting to that. You do need to be aware of what else is going to end up being connected to that, such as power paths via water pipes and other things. And again, the electrode cannot be put in the ground near to anything else which is connected to that TN earth. Otherwise, when a fault occurs, that voltage will transfer across to your TT connection and therefore make it kind of pointless. So uh, that's a quick look there. That does apply to things like uh, car charging, hot tubs, and pretty much anything else that's outside, which you might not want to use the TN CS earth for. Unfortunately, in most uh, urban areas particularly, it's going to be next to impossible to get that 10 metre distance, simply the fact there's going to be other properties around and buried pipes and all kinds of other stuff in the way. So uh, generally not the uh, wonderful and simple option you might have thought. However, that is it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.